And right before a most likely bad jobs report for January, the GOP has just enough votes to make sure people don't get continued unemployment. Oh, Washington, we love you so much. Talking about another stumble next on Get Right with Lenny McAllister, starting right now. Get Right with Lenny McAllister. The way we help bring back America and we build the bridges and bring people together is by making sure we hold everybody accountable in a 360 fashion. So let me close with this. Yes, there is a change that we can believe in, but it will never come from a politician or a government program. We got to move away from the American Idol soundbite nature of politics and back to the American statesman of humble servant leadership that we used to see in politics. It is time to roll out the era of the new American citizen. If we could continue to get some common sense governing from both sides of the aisle, we could finally get Americans through the recession, not just Wall Street. We need people that could change the crisis that we're seeing, and that's why, as a proud Republican, I go to the jail ministry, I speak to the kids in the streets, so I'm never going to lay down being a Republican or being a conservative, just as much as I'll never lay down being a proud African American. I feel like a black... I wish I felt more by what we're hearing today. What am I talking about? Well, first I'm talking about Thursday edition of Get Right with Lenny McAllister, which I am very much encouraged about. Very much encouraged to spend the next few minutes with you. You know the drill. You know where to find me on Twitter, L-E-N-N-Y-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R. On Facebook. On Facebook. On Facebook. Two walls, same name, L-E-N-N-Y-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R. If you buy into the discriminatory practices of Mark Zuckerberg and his merry men and women down there on the West Coast discriminating against me and not allowing me to have more than 5,000 friends, there's a public page that you can put your comments for the podcast. If you're one of the lucky 5,000 friends, if you actually slipped underneath that glass ceiling, then you can hit me up on two walls. Either way, I want to hear your feedback. I am encouraged always to hear your feedback. I am not encouraged by the jobs report that's coming out tomorrow, and therefore, I'm not encouraged by what has transpired in Congress particularly the Senate, yet again today on Thursday. Which is what? Very simply this. When you know that you're going to have Disappointment Friday coming up with the jobs report, which, by the way, every first Friday you have Catholic Mass for the Catholic schools and parochial schools, and you have Disappointment Friday, at least under the Obama administration when it comes to jobs and creation and unemployment, jobs creation, not creationism, because we don't want to get into Catholic school stuff. But you know my point. When it comes to jobs creation, when it comes to the unemployment rate, when it comes to this economy really getting back on track for middle-class America, working-class America, let's ignore Wall Street for a second. When it comes to middle-class America, working-class America, and particularly the poor that are struggling to get into the other two classes that I just mentioned, Disappointment Friday is going to come Every first Friday of the month. So if you're in third grade, you go to parochial school here in Pittsburgh, or you go to it in Chicago, or you go anywhere around the country, every first Friday, if you're like me growing up in Catholic schools, you're going to go to Mass, and you're probably going to get a half day of school. If you're dealing with Disappointment Friday, you know that the job support is not going to be very good. You know that it's going to probably say something along the lines of 150,000 jobs added, 105,000 jobs added. Maybe, maybe we'll get to 185, 195. And we'll all celebrate a 180, a 185, knowing that we need to be at at least 225, 250 to really, really, really feel good about the jobs numbers. So with that said, as we're staring and looking forward at Disappointment Friday, Coming up tomorrow, we know that we sit here Thursday and hope that maybe leaders in Washington would make a decision that would reflect the fact that Disappointment Friday is literally right around the corner. It's kind of like the Easter Bunny during Easter season. It's kind of like Santa Claus, Christmas time. You know that Disappointment Friday is going to come once a month. With that said, the vote from the U.S. Senate, once again, denying the extension of unemployment insurance. I don't understand it. I mean, I understand, and again, agree, disagree. You know where to find me on Twitter and Facebook, social media. I, I, 
I understand it from a fiscal perspective. I am a fiscal hawk. And, and I know that there are you out there. Those of you out there are sitting there saying, you cannot possibly be a fiscal hawk and then disagree with the Senate doing this. I, I get it as a, as a conservative. I get it as a fiscal hawk. At the same time, when you know the disappointment Friday is coming and you know the jobs are not coming back and you know the last jobs report had 74,000 jobs added in December. And even if there are some revisions to the last two months that come out tomorrow on disappointment Friday, they're still not going to say that all of a sudden 300,000 jobs are added in November and December. In January, you know that's not what's coming out of this report. You know earlier in the week, they said that manufacturing, down. You know that people have had a negative outlook on all this and have taken it out on stocks on Wall Street because what's been going on, the Dow Jones has been going down. So you know all these things are transpiring. And when it's time to vote on possibly extending unemployment insurance once again, you actually get it voted to a point where people are looking to vote on this in a final vote. You actually get it to the point where you end debate, and that's voted upon. You get it on the floor. You end debate, and then it's time to vote on the bill, and you still don't pass it. Now, there have been some Republicans that are seeing the light. Now, I'm not, you know, my, my thing is this. I'm not saying... We sh you should have willy-nilly spending in Washington. That, that got us to where we are right now. But I am saying that as long as you see the Great Recession have its tentacles around the neck of American families, which is what's going on. It's not there. It's not grabbing you on the leg. It's not grabbing you around the wrist and trying to pull you back in. It is choking off American families on the regular every day. Hasn't stopped since 2008. Started at the end of 2007. Jobs just just literally just purged out of the American economy starting in 2007 at the tail end of 2007 all the way through 2008. And although we haven't lost the jobs like we did in 2008, we have never quite filled in the jobs deficit that we had. And now people are trying to get us to the new normal. And I understand that people are afraid of the new normal, including never-ending unemployment insurance. At the same time, one, this president's going to be gone in a couple of years. So I think even with a Hillary Clinton as president, you're going to have a more moderate Democrat in there that's going to be more willing to work with conservatives that will probably be more fiscally sound than President Obama has been. I, I know the deficit has come down underneath this president. I will also tell you that the incentive to work in America has gone down underneath this president as well. I will say that when the unemployment rate has continued to go down in America. So has the hope that America will have a new normal over the course of the rest of the 21st century that will infuse talents from all across the country. Yes, we have diversity in the White House. We don't seem to have a diversity of prosperity elsewhere. But at least that's going to end. And because that's going to end, you have to give people some type of hope that they're not going to lose everything and have to rebuild all over again, because whether people realize it or not, that is when you get to a point in time where you start having further social decay, further hopelessness. And whereas you may not be able to quantify that, that is hard to motivate into a new job, into a new career, into new training. And that's what everybody says we need in America. New jobs, new careers, new training, more education. More thinking outside the box. No one's going to think outside the box if they feel like it's over. And we talked about the CBO report where more people are going to jump out of the workforce. And again, this is why all of this going on. And the Republicans that did not vote for the unemployment extension. Again, I said it at the beginning of January. I say it again. Even if you vote to extend it for 30 days. 30 days. Give it one more job report. How much money could that possibly be? $2 billion for 30 days? I think the number was something like $6 billion for 60 to 90 days. Again, I'm not for all willy-nilly spending out of Washington, but it's extremely ironic that this is one of the most successful and economically viable, personally, Congresses that have ever been assembled, where the average congressman in both chambers is a millionaire. 
they're looking at this and saying, people, we can't afford to spend like this anymore, and we're going to incent you. We're going to encourage you to go look for work by cutting your unemployment benefits, knowing that Disappointment Friday is tomorrow. And I'm going to call it Disappointment Friday, and I'm going to challenge you to respond to me on Twitter Friday and over the weekend if the jobs report isn't disappointing. Because we haven't had one that's been encouraging in quite some time. So I'm going to continue to call it Disappointment Friday because guess what? I bet you dollars to donuts if you have a dollar and if we can find any place that's selling donuts because I don't have a dollar. Not many of them anyway. Not to spend on no donuts. But I bet you dollars to donuts that this jobs report is disappointing. So you have what you had come out from the CBO earlier this week. Roughly the equivalent of 2 million full-time jobs, whether you call it in labor hours or you call it in workers or former workers or whatever, you're basically going to see that leave the American economy over the next 7 to 10 years. And it's because they've been liberated to be free to be underemployed or unemployed because they can go get government subsidies that people can't pay for because the tax revenue is going to go down because we won't have as many workers in the economy. Get that good. Now, take that. Couple it with Disappointment Friday coming. This is the big sandwich that Americans are dealing with. When you're in the middle class, the working class, and the poor in America, this is the big crap sandwich that you've been given today. Now, on one side is that CBO report that we just talked about. On the other side, Disappointment Friday coming. You know the jobs, generally speaking, aren't out there. You know you want to work, and for the most part, you've gotten discouraged because even if you take that $7 an hour job where people will tell you, well, at least it's working, you have your pride, yes, but daycare's $8 an hour. Getting to and from work is going to cost you $5 a day. You now lose money to go to work. Is it better to stay home or is it better to go to work? So those are the two sides of this crap sandwich. That the struggling within America, which, by the way, we know the numbers are increasing over the years of the Obama administration, the Obama tenure, the era of Obama. Those numbers are increasing. Those are the two pieces of bread of this crap sandwich. And in between, now you have the U.S. Senate telling you a whole bunch of millionaires, 100 millionaires roughly, on average, telling you, telling you that we can't afford to give you 30 more days as we continue to try to tweak this economy, as we continue to try to encourage people to hire the long-term unemployed. The last check was the long-term unemployed were out of the workforce for roughly 37 weeks or so. That is more than two-thirds of a year, roughly. Roughly. So you, you get laid off January 1st. You're not, you get laid off January 1st after making a snowman with your kids on New Year's Day. You're not going to get a job on average until roughly you and your wife have lost those 20 pounds so you look good on the beach if you can afford to go on vacation or if you can bum a vacation with one of your family members, hop in the backseat, drive down to the beach, get away from your worries. That's when your cell phone goes off. Late July. Early August, that's when you get a job. On average, that's if you're still being counted. That's not even if, and we know this is the case from last month, you're part of, I don't know, 300,000 people that said, screw it, I can't find anything. So this crap sandwich that you've been given this week, first week in February, CBO report telling you over the next 7 to 10 years, people will be liberated given the God-given freedom to be unemployed or underemployed in America because you can get government subsidies and be taken care of by way of Obamacare. The other side of this crap sandwich is Disappointment Friday, which we will find out tomorrow if it's going to live up to its moniker, which I'm guaranteeing you it probably will. Because we know we can just look at the numbers of the last, I don't know, several years. But maybe, maybe we'll be surprised. I doubt it. And then in the middle of it, you have the U.S. Senate, 100 millionaires, telling you, roughly, on average, telling you that we as a country cannot afford, we cannot find two more billion dollars to give you 30 days. We can't find it someplace in the budget. And I I still, again, I know people will say, you don't sound like very much of a fiscal hawk or a Republican. I've said this previously in January. I say it again. Republicans, you should have found a way to find the money. Find a way to find the money from a political optics perspective, you can't win this. From an ethical perspective, it looks worse. And I'm talking, that's pure partisanship right there. From a legislative body perspective, 
There's no way. I don't see how there's an ethical way to look at people as the unemployment rate. And by the way, it's been falling, but it's been falling for all the wrong reasons. Work, labor workforce participation rate, the last time we looked at the numbers, again, agree, disagree. I mean, these numbers are out there. Love to get your feedback, but these numbers are out there. That participation rate was the lowest since 1978, since Franco Harris was galloping the sidelines of a stadium that doesn't even exist anymore. It hasn't even existed for 15 years, roughly. The last time this happened, Dallas truly was America's team, almost kind of, sort of. And they were the defending Super Bowl champions. The last time this happened, there was a basketball team in Seattle, and Seattle wasn't winning the Super Bowl. They weren't even close to winning the Super Bowl. I don't even think they were close to going to the playoffs. Playoffs? Do you see how bizarro this is? So, again, agree, disagree. I'm, I, I'm putting it out there. I'm, once again, it's not like this is anything, no. But I'm disappointed in what we're seeing from our senatorial and congressional leadership. These are things that, from a Republican or Democratic perspective, from a partisan perspective, you've got to find ways to make this work. You've got to find ways to get this done. You, you, you just have to. Okay, we won't extend it for 90 days. We'll extend it for 45 days. We won't extend it for 45 days. We'll extend it for 30 days. We will give people that opportunity, and we'll make it retroactive for a month. So in essence, you get 60 days, but we're only really extending it through March 15th, March 7th, March 31st. I, I, look, maybe that's not as hawkish as it should be from a – philosophical perspective when it comes to politics. But we're dealing with a recession that just never ended. And people need to go look at history. The way we got out of the Great Recession or the Great Depression was a war. I don't know if America wants to give up millions of men again and go up against a, an Adolf Hitler. I, I don't think that America has a stomach for it, and there's not really a need quite out there like that. There's no threat quite like that yet. So if you're looking and saying, well, we eventually got into the Great Depression, yeah, we got out of it through World War II. Literally, it took the Japanese to bomb Pearl Harbor. The war didn't, it wasn't even the war that got started that got the recession to turn around. It literally took us being attacked. And it wasn't our land, it wasn't our state, because Hawaii wasn't a state yet. Just Get it straight. Hawaii wasn't a state until 59. This is in 1941. Just putting that out there for everybody, for those of you that may forget. But we were attacked at our naval base in Hawaii. It took that for everything to start turning around in the economy because we had to get into a wartime production mode. I don't think that we have the stomach for that. I don't think that we're looking to do that. And even the, the model of war is completely different in America. And we are a war-fatigued nation, which we kind of were in the 30s, which is why we were trying to stay isolationist. A little bit of history, but I digress. If you're going to get out of the Great Recession, it's a different type of war that we're going to have to take on. We're fighting geoeconomically. We're fighting this global economy, and we're trying to win. We're fighting against the Chinese manipulating their currency, stealing trade secrets. We're fighting against countries that will undercut us by more than 50% on the global on their corporate rate so that globally we can't compete the same exact way. And until you fix some of those things, which are not easy fixes, those are not things that happen overnight. If you're going to win and fix those things, you have to give the American people an opportunity to at least breathe and get to the other side. We're, look, we already have a deficit. We're already in billions and billions and billions of dollars of debt. I get that. And you don't really want to build upon that. But there are certain things you have to just do. Because the truth of the matter is, the government is for the people, the economy is made up of the people, the leadership is going to be the people, and if we're going to win geoeconomically for the 21st century, you're going to do it through the resiliency and the innovation of the American people. But if they cannot get to the other side of this great recession that's still going on, 
If you don't want to believe me, just ask middle class America, working class America, and the poor. Forget Wall Street. Forget the economist. Don't ask them. Anybody that you see on television, don't ask them, except for me. <laughs> just a joke, kind of sort of. Anybody that's a talking head or an economist or somebody that's not part of those three classes are not going to see this the same exact way. Because they're working, they continue to work through this recession, and they can look at it academically. Which, by the way, that's been the whole problem with President Obama as I close. We, we, we continue to talk about how professorial he is. Well, we need a tangible president. We need tangible leadership in Washington. We don't need a professorial approach. We don't need an academic approach. We don't need a million dollar, look down our nose, completely philosophical approach to what is going on in America right now. That only continues the divide. Yes, I'm a hawk when it comes to fiscal matters. Yes, I can squeeze a penny so hard in my personal and private affairs that Abe Lincoln would basically go to a police station and claim assault. But at some point in time, you have to look at the welfare of your people and make it happen. And that's something that this Senate, once again, did not do, did not find a way to compromise, did not find a way to find the money, and subsequently handed the American people a crap sandwich. The CBO report on one side, disappointment Friday on the other, and right in the middle, no, you can't find jobs, but you're not going to have much hope from us either. Oh, America, where are we going from here? What's your take on this? You know where to find me on Twitter. L-E-N-N-Y-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R. Facebook, Two Walls, same name. Love to get your feedback. Looking forward to talking to you on Friday. We'll see if it lives up to the moniker of Disappointment Friday. I hope not, but I'm afraid that we probably will be talking a lot more about that tomorrow. In the meanwhile, you enjoy your Thursday. Looking forward to talking to you soon. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. TCNGB. Take care and God bless.